Amen, amen. As the song says, there's power in the name of Jesus. The break every change we got to stand on that we got to again hold God to his word that he is able to break every change that may be in our lives and as we believe on his word we're going to stand to our feet as the pastor comes and delivers the word so again God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that all that we can ask or think amen amen hallelujah Gracious Father, we come before you once again, Lord, in the name of your son, Jesus, yes. Lord. We thank you, Lord, for sending him to die for our sin, Lord. We thank you, God, that you sought fit to wake us this morning, God. And we praise and honor you and ask you to continue, Lord, to allow us to see this day. And Lord, we ask as we expound your word, God, that you clothe my mouth, Lord, and you put a bridle on my tongue that I only speak your word, God. And Lord, I pray that your word touch someone, Lord, yes. and change their heart and change their mind and desire. Yes. We ask this in Jesus' name. Let every heart say, thank God, thank God. and amen. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Hey, amen. You may have your seats. Amen. We are going to, let me uh, turn all this stuff off here. So. Amen. God has been good to us. We are going to continue with part two on uh, marriage, divorce, and remarriage. Amen. And I understand that this is a difficult uh, subject matter to those who are remarried and your first husband or first wife is still living. Amen. And nevertheless, we have to do what God requires. If you're going to live by his word, doesn't matter how good a person that second husband or that second wife is, we still have to obey God's word. There is none righteous but God. So whatever his word says, we, if we are claiming him, we have to live by it. Amen. Isn't that right? That's right. Amen. Amen. And as I have always stated to you, since God made me a pastor, I won't change his word. Amen. If God's word tell me that that chair there is red, then it's red. Doesn't matter what color you see or what you say, it's what God says. Yes. Amen. And as I'm standing here right now, I have donned my spiritual boxing gloves because every demon in hell is standing here fighting with me. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Yes. Yes. Amen. Satan wants your mind. And if he has your mind, there's nothing nobody can do for you but God. Yes. But the scripture says that we are renewed by the, our mind. And so you may see God's word your way or you just can't see God doing this, that or the other. But if he has already said it, then that's what it is. Amen. Amen. Open your Bibles today if you should have your Bibles. And my friends that are viewing via Facebook and YouTube, uh, I hope that we are live. D, give me a hand or something. All right, praise the Lord. Uh, we are live. And let me welcome you uh, that are viewing via Facebook. And uh, soon on YouTube, uh, I don't have the ability to stream it live to both at this time. And I believe at this particular time, we are live on Facebook. Amen. And as I get more help, as the Lord uh, give me more help, uh, we'll be able to uh, see your comments we'll be, while we're live. And uh, uh, 
during our um, su uh, Sunday schools and uh, Bible studies that we hope that at some time stream we may be able to answer your questions live. Amen. But right now, uh, I don't have the ability. Uh, I don't have the help. I do have the ability. I don't have the help. And uh, God saw fit to, uh, that I don't need the help right now. That's why you're not here. But soon you will be, whoever you are. Amen. Some of my members only view via Facebook or YouTube. That's because you're so far away. And you have finally found a pastor that's going to stand up for the word of God and not change it. Amen. I have not got up here and asked anybody to, for an offering. I have not asked you to send me one red dime. Amen. If you choose to do so, you may do so. Amen. God put this what you would call a burden on me and I'm going to carry it. Praise our God. Amen. Get your Bible up, you will. DJ, if you can get me uh, Galatians 4 and 16. Amen. I want to bring this verse before we get started. I'm going to have Sister Harmon, you got a mic? Yes. You can start reading that scripture for me, please. Am I therefore become your enemy? Am I therefore become your enemy? This was Paul's question to the Galatians. And today, this is my question once again to you, my viewer, to you, my brother, to you. Go ahead. Because I tell you the truth. Amen. Paul said, am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. Amen. Sometimes the truth is not so easily swallowed. Sometimes it's a hard thing to see. But the bottom line is if we want to walk with him, we have to walk with him in truth. Yes. So here I am, your brother, your big brother, your little brother, your skinny brother, your fat brother, nevertheless, your brother. And I come telling you the truth. There was a nice saying that gentleman put online and it was a really nice illustration and it said now, you may have saw it and I may not quote it right but you'll get the idea it showed a picture of a great big church big auditorium like a football a basketball auditorium filled to capacity. Standing room only. And it said, this is how church looks when you preach what they want to hear. Not even any room in the parking lot. Then there was another picture There was another picture that said when you preach the truth. DJ, do me a favor, if you will, and switch over here to camera two so that they can see your audience. Mm -hmm. the, the other picture said this is what it looked like when truth is being preached. You can switch it back. Thank you. So that, that's what it looked like. Why? Because people don't want to hear the truth. The scripture said there'll come a time when they won't endure sound doctrine. 
me get this jacket off, huh? I'm so mad at the devil, I'm going to start swinging right away. There comes a time when they will not hear sound doctrine. Every word in here is sound doctrine. That need to be edited. We're going to go to, DJ, get me Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter. Start at about verse 13 and go on down to about 29. Now just hold it there. So we are continuing on our divorce, remarriage. We're continuing on, and marriage, we're continuing on that. It's still under the title sexual sin. There's a whole lot of things that are sexual sin. Let me just say that they call this month of June that they celebrate, they call it Pride. And they have a festival that they have downtown, and I don't know if they had it already, but they call it Pride Fest. In other words, they are proud to be what God say they ain't. God said he created a male and female. God said that marriage is between a man and a woman. Now anytime you hear Pastor Harmon preaching about marriage, just for the record, because there are some of you out there will say, well, you said any marriage. The Bible says that God honors marriage in all, 13 and 4 in Hebrews. A godly marriage. Any marriage that is not according with the, the, the Bible says is not a marriage at all. A man marrying a man is not a marriage. I don't care if Judge Wapner put you together. It's not a marriage. You can call it what you want. This microphone here, you can call it a Chevy Pinto, but it's still a microphone. Praise God. So when Pastor Harmon talks about marriage, Write it down. I'm talking about godly marriage between a man and a woman. And you that call yourself saved, that question me and say, well, what about uh, uh, two men that got married? It's a marriage. You that say that, that say you are saved, it is blasphemy. Because you're supposed to know what the word of God is. You claimed him. He told you what marriage is. And because man said, hey, a woman and a woman, I'll give you this document. You, you're married. Don't fool yourself. They call yourself a saint of God. It's blasphemy. Let me just step away one second here. Let me talk to the young people for a minute. Young folk and single folks too. If you're out there looking for a husband, young lady, a man that's looking for a wife don't want everybody seeing the goods that's supposed to be his. What are you saying, Pastor? You need to dress appropriately. You need to cover yourself up. Some of you, are, you come to church, I don't know if you're in the church or club. You can't tell the difference. You want to look pretty. You can be pretty with your clothes on. And some of you, Ladies, you're just deceiving these men. 
Now listen, young brother. Listen to the old dude. Listen to the gray haired fella. See, this gray hair and this old gray beard should tell you that he done been through something. He knows something. And let me tell you, I do, but I don't know it of myself. Out of this book, book of Proverbs, fellas, get in it. But you women, you're deceiving these fellas. How many of you have had these implants done to yourself? Because you wanted to get that fella. How many of you got to wake up every morning and put your eyelashes on? You don't like the ones that God gave you, so you go down to the store and you buy you some. There was a, there was a man, a young fella, and he thought he found a, the woman of his dreams. Young fella. And he said, every time I see a man, my heart skips a beat. I'm in love, man. I, I'm going to marry this woman. So after dating, they, they, they married. And she had gone a weekend to go spend with her girlfriends. And, and he was supposed to meet her down there. And so he takes a plane, he gets there, and he, uh, his, that, that GPS that we use so much, you just all you have to do was punch the numbers in it. Where you want to go, it takes you right there. So when he got to the house, he knew he was at the right house. The numbers matched up. The description of the house, everything was kosher. Everything lined up. And he went to knock on the door. Nobody answered, so, so he knocked again. And he peered through the window, and then he, he saw a woman coming to the door. He said, okay. And when she opened the door, he said, it's, let's say her name is Jessica. Is, is Jessica here? And the woman at the door said, boy, stop playing. You see, Jessica didn't put a face on this morning. So what he was looking for wasn't what he found. He gets there. She said, boy, stop playing. You know this me. He had never seen her with her stuff on, without her stuff on. Be careful, young man. Because according to the Bible, when you marry her, you can't leave. Because you went before God with vows. You better know what you're getting, young man. And young woman, you better know what you're getting. They make clothes now that, that feminize the men. They got uh, halter tops, tank, whatever the thing is. They don't go around this part of you. That ladies know what it's called. I don't know what it is. Half a shirt, I call it. But now they're making them for men. They got cat suits for men. They're feminizing you. Now we're going to talk about marriage. Deuteronomy chapter 22. And we're going to start at verse 13. Now during the monologue there, I hope you ones that like to make fun of the preacher, I, I hope you're comfortable right about now. I gave you enough time to go get your blanket. I gave you enough time to adjust your recliner. I hope you're ready. I hope you found the Bible. You just had it last week, Sunday. I hope you got it now. And as you're sitting there, pick out a place to place it when you're done so next Sunday it won't be so hard to find. And I'm going to ask you to just to follow along like they used to tell you in school. Just follow along. And if I change the scripture, 
Go on, shut me off. Just let me expound on the scripture. Because some of you will not understand this word and it, it has to be broken down so you can explain it. You don't just give an infant steak. Remember when we were younger, mama used to put in her mouth, she would chew it up so you can swallow it. Well, let me chew up the word of God so you can swallow it. Go ahead, Mother Harmon. If any man take a wife. Now listen here. The scripture says, if any man. Talking to a fella the other day and he goes, well, well, how we know that ain't talking uh, 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 about a married man? Well, as we read on through, or if you give your chance a, a time to get through and read the context and don't just stop there. We stop there because we need to expound some things to you. We need to make it plain to you. So just sit back and relax. We're going to get there. The scripture said, if any man take a wife uh -huh, and go in and go in unto her and hate her and hate her. Now that needs to be broken down a bit. What did it mean if any man go into go in unto this wife and then he hate her? So last week we talked about the espoused wife. And later on, I just want you to get this because when you get this, you will get Matthew chapter 19, verses 9 on. You'll get it. But it said, if any man take a wife and he go in unto her, he goes in to consummate this marriage. And then he finds out, trying to give you a picture here. I'm still on that verse right there, 22 and 13. I'm still there. So it says, if any man goes in unto this wife, uh -huh, and he hate her, he finds something he don't like about her. Remember the man that went and knocked on the door looking for his woman? And when she came to the door, he didn't recognize her. See, that was hate her. He found something he didn't like in her. So after he consummated the marriage, then he finds something that he hated her about. She may only have two toes on one foot. He didn't know that. Mm -hmm. He may wake up and there's one of your eyelashes stuck to his back. He didn't know them wasn't yours. He may wake up and find one of your cheeks done flipped over because of the surgery you, you done had. You didn't like how God made you so you went and had somebody doctor you up and, and change some things. But he didn't know that. It's some things in particular I'm going to get to that the man did not know one thing that the woman deceived him on and that's the one thing that Jesus said that you can divorce for. I know some of you pastors don't taught them wrong and said that they can divorce if, if they commit adultery. That's not what the scripture said. Follow along. Let's go to the next verse, DJ. And give occasions of speech against her. And give occasions of speech against her. What that's saying is he come and say something bad about her. That's occasion of speech against her. Go ahead. And bring up an evil name upon and her. And bring up an evil name upon her, saying something bad about this woman. Go ahead. And say... I took this woman, and when I came to her, uh -huh. I found her not a maid. All right, hold on right there. Let me break it down, fellas. And all of you that already know, just bear with me. You see, everybody ain't on the same educational level. Everybody don't understand the same. Sometimes, if not all, we have to give you a couple of examples. So if, if you don't get it right here, huh? you might get it right here. 
And if you can't get it right here, we need to bring it all the way down here so that everybody gets it. If I gave it only right here, only a few gonna get it. You educated folks, you educated fools will get it in your way. But see, God concerned about everybody because if I give it down here, you should know what I'm talking about here. But we're going to cross the whole gamut. Uh-huh. Hold on here. It says, and bring evil upon her name and say, I took this woman. In other words, he said, the woman that I was engaged to, when the date came, let's say here, it's June, today's June 9th, I believe. If it ain't, you know what day it is. Let's say it's June 9th and, and we're engaged. I'm trying to show you something. We're engaged, but the marriage ain't going to be till December 1st. Uh-huh. And see, we're engaged and I, the woman tells me that, that she's a virgin. She's going to save herself for me to marriage and I promise her the same thing. That I'm a virgin and I'm going to save myself for you. God never intended for sex for uh, single people. So all you praise dancers, soon as you get done flying around the stage and, and then you go home to that, that boyfriend and you lay up there and you do the nasty, God ain't with you. Stop lying to yourself. God ain't in that. But this man took a wife and then on December 1st, on the day of the marriage, he finds out some things. The scripture says, and when he came to her, I found her not to be a maid. Now, maid here is not talking about somebody cleaning your house. It ain't say he woke up and found the house nasty. That ain't what it's talking about, fella. That ain't what it's talking about, pastor. That ain't what it's talking about. Stop telling them people that. When it says found her not to be a maid, it says found her not to be a virgin. But you twist it. Because they don't know. See, it says maid right here. That says virgin. Young man, young woman. Go ahead. Then shall the father of the damsel. Then shall the father of that young girl that he's engaged to. What are you going to do? And her mother. Uh-huh. Take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel. All right. Now let's hold up just a minute here. Take and bring forth the tokens. L listen, this is very important. To you that are married and, uh, and got that second husband. Or that second wife. And your first husband or your first wife is still living. Let me tell you something. Look at God's word here because he don't recognize your second marriage and your first one is still living. So they brought the tokens of the damsel. What is that, pastor? When they got engaged it was called bethrottled for all you Jewish scholars. Mm -hmm. Meant in, in spouse or meant engaged. And you tell people now engaged or, oh, well, what's the, I, well, I want the Jewish meaning because, because it means different. I always done told you. After you get done dancing on it, huh? After you get done shaking it up, huh? After you get done going to Webster, huh? It's going to mean the same thing. When they brought the tokens of the damsels, virginity. Go ahead. Unto the elders of the city in the gate. Uh huh. Now let me explain the, the, the tokens of her virginity. We don't see that in our day and time much, do we? But it's still some virgins out there. You see, when that man wanted to marry that woman, he came to the father and, and told him, I want to I marry your daughter. And they were just like in marriage. See, they, they, don't, they didn't take it like we take it now. See, you say, if I'm engaged, you find something a little better, you can walk away. And that's wrong. 
We got to go by what the scripture says, those that you, that say you live by it. So when they got engaged, they couldn't sleep together. The woman still stayed with her parents until the marriage when the man came and got her. There was no sexual intercourse going on. Why? Because they weren't married yet. He had throttled her. It was just like marriage. But it didn't have all the benefits of marriage. Hmm? Couldn't, after the, whatever fun you had, you couldn't go and, and lay with the woman. If you had a great time out at dinner, they couldn't go home together and do the do. So they brought the tokens of her virginity. Listen, the father would give the daughter this. The token is like a, like a let me just use like a, 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 a white sheet. Let me use that so everybody can understand it. It was like a white sheet. So when December 1st came and that man had waited to go in unto his, his bride, his espoused wife, the wife that he had betrothed, that that day had finally come when he can marry her and consummate the marriage. And he didn't know or would not know if she was a virgin until after the consummation. You see, this token that the father would give would show proof that the daughter was a virgin. You'll get it. Just hold on. Go ahead. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders. And the damsel's father. Now listen, this man done came. He done had sex with her, right? They, they got married first. She laid down this token, this, this white blanket. Then they had sex. And he found something he didn't like about her. So he says, he's going to make up a lie and say, she wasn't a virgin because there was no blood. Now, listen, young fella, you might not know this, but ladies definitely know this. If a woman is a virgin, that means her hymen hasn't been ruptured. When the hymen is ruptured, there's blood. And so what this man said is, I went in unto her. Now, I'm not changing the scripture. I'm just putting it away. You can understand it. He said, I went in unto her and on the token, when we got done, there was no blood. But it really was. But he didn't want them because she only had three toes, remember? You remember when you woke up, fella, her eyelash was stuck to your back? Go ahead. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I uh -huh. gave my daughter unto this man to wife. Uh-huh, hold it right and there. So he's going before the elders. This is the father saying, listen, I gave my wife to this man to, to marry. And now he done scandalized her name. He done said something about her that ain't true. And I have the token to prove it. Go ahead. And he hateth her. Uh-huh, that means that's, that's, that's when you find her eyelash on your back. That's when you find out she only got two toes. You didn't know that. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her. He done talked about her. Saying. Uh-huh. What did he say? I found not thy daughter a maid. He said, I found not your daughter to be a virgin. Uh-huh. See, crooked pastor said, oh, see, she, she, see he didn't like because she didn't clean up the house. She, she wasn't no maid. She didn't, you know. I, always, I had to clean up everything. Good woman didn't do nothing. That ain't what that's talking about. He said he found her not to be a virgin. 
Go ahead. I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens uh -huh. of my daughter's So what virginity. the father is saying is to all the elders, here's the proof. Here is the proof that my daughter was a virgin. Dante, step downstairs and get me a bottle of water so I can get the devil out of these folks. Come on. Read. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders uh -huh. of the city. They have taken that cloth. He said, they, this man came and said that my daughter wasn't a virgin. But let me give you the proof, elders. This is what he said. Let me give you the proof. He took that cloth and he, and he spread it out. And he says, look, that's the proof that my daughter was a virgin. Go ahead. And the elders of that city uh -huh. shall take that man and chastise now him. Now, hold on. The elders looked at the proof and said, yeah, she was a virgin. Now, listen, listen, fella, you done lied. You done scandalized this woman. You done scandalized the father and mother. You done, you done scandalized them. So now the elders have to chastise him. Go ahead. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him. Uh huh. And they shall immerse him in mm -hmm. a hundred shackles of silver. Uh huh. They're going to charge him. And give them unto the father. They're going to give the it damsel. to his father. You done scandalized him. Go ahead. Because he had brought up an evil name upon He done the brought up an evil report. Israel. He done brought up an evil report about this man's daughter. He done brought up an untruth about this man's young daughter that he married. Go ahead. And she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. Now here it says, since you lied, you lied. You're trying to get out of this marriage. You that are trying to get out of marriage, you that bring up every excuse to leave that woman or to leave that man. Listen to what the word of God says. Not Pastor Herman, the word of God. Read it again, Gene. But if this thing be true. Back it up. Oh. DJ, go back one scripture. Go ahead, right there. And they shall immerse him uh -huh. in a hundred shackles. They're going to charge him a hundred shackles. And give, give them unto the father uh -huh. of the damsel. Mm -hmm. Because he have brought up an evil name he upon a put a bad name on Israel. Her. Uh -huh. And she shall be his wife. Wait a minute here. You can't get rid of a fella. See, the marriage had already taken place. Huh? Listen, they had gone through the engagement stage. Now they're married. They're married now. But now he finds something that he don't like about her. Uh-huh. Whenever I get to what I don't like about her, think about that eyelash you found on your back. You know, it might have been on your chest. It might have even been stuck to your face. Think about that. Huh? But he found something he didn't like. So he tried to get rid of her. And when the elders looked at all the evidence and said, fella, you're lying. Now, for lying, it's going to cost you this. And then it says you're going to have to marry. We're going to start there with, and she shall be what? And she shall be his wife. She's going to continue to be your wife, fella. You tried to get out of it. Huh? Because you went before God and you said you, to death do your part. And you said that she did this when she didn't. So the scripture says that she shall be his wife. Uh huh. He may not put her away. And he may not divorce her. All, all the, days. the days of his life. He can't get away now. Now let me give you the flip side, if you will. Let me show you about the, the one that's guilty. Go ahead. But if this thing be true. Now he's saying, wait a minute. The scripture is saying, wait a minute, because I, I, I'm, I'm giving you the example where the man lied to try to get out of it. Huh? And God's word said, no, you lied. This is your penalty. And you're going to be with her. She's still your wife because you came before me with them vows. You ain't getting out of it. She's going to be your wife as long as you live. But now he tells us the flip side. Start back from the top. But if this thing, but if this thing be true, if this 
accusation that the man made and said that he found her not to be a virgin. The scripture here said, if this thing be true, go ahead. And the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel. So then, what he said, hold on. He said, if this thing be true, when the, when the father, when the parents bring me the token, when they bring the tokens before the elders and they lay it out, and there's no blood there. You see, uh, marriage is a blood covenant. God says when you come before him in, in marriage that the two shall become one. And then he went a little further to say, and what God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. See, uh, when it's talking man, it can, it's talking humanity. Because every judge ain't a man. There's some women judges. But they are referred to as man. It meant humanity. Go ahead. It says, then they shall bring out the damsel. Then they're going to listen here. Listen here now. You have to under, this is what I want you to understand. While they are engaged, uh huh. Think about yourself. You that are engaged, shacking up there together, you already wrong. But think about uh, you that are engaged, uh huh, and you, you're not living together. She lives there and you live here, uh huh, and you've promised yourself to each other, uh huh, but you ain't living together. Go ahead. It says, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house. All right, hold up, hold up a minute. I meant go back a little bit. But can, can you go back to they Start with then, because I'm trying to get something here. Then I'm sorry. Uh -huh. they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house. And the men of her okay, city. Okay, stop right there. I, I want to do the scripture. Just leave it there. That's fine, DJ. What it's saying here? Is there, they are engaged. But during the engagement, this woman went out and cheated. She went out and had an affair. But didn't nobody know about it but God, her, and the man she was with. This fellow over here who's been faithful, he doesn't know that. He doesn't find out until December 1st. When they lay down and there's no blood. When he finds out there's no blood, what is the sin that was committed? Why can he get rid of her? Jesus said, except it be for fornication. DJ, I'm going to want you to go right back to this. But right now, I want you to go over to Matthew. Give me chapter 19 and uh, probably verse 9 or 10. Right here. Go ahead, read this for a second here. Well, hold on. Listen, viewer, keep your finger there in Deuteronomy. We're going back. I just need to show you something. I just need to show all you folks that say you can get divorced because of adultery. Go ahead. This is, and I say unto you. And I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking. Listen, this ain't Moses speaking. There's one greater than Moses that's speaking here. This is Jesus, and he says, I say unto you. Go ahead. Whosoever shall put. Whosoever shall divorce his wife. Except it be for fornication. And the only reason that you can divorce is for fornication. Now listen. Hold on, honey. Go on, lady. Finish taking that drag off that old nasty Newport. And set it down to the side. And help the smoke to clear because I want you to see the string. You too, fella. Go on, take another sip. We know you're going to do it anyway. Hurry up, get it done so you can listen to the word of God. And then you'll never pick up that can of beer again. I hope you got your last joke in. 
Because here comes the word of God. And what we're going to do, we're going to take it from the top. Let's go from the top again. Listen. And I say unto you. Jesus speaking again. I say unto you. Whosoever shall put away his sword. Whosoever. Wait a minute right there. The scripture says whosoever. Some of you will have the nerve to say, well, uh, I got divorced before I was saved. Uh huh. The, the scripture didn't say you who that was divorced before you were saved. It didn't even say you that was divorced after you were saved. It said whosoever. That includes everybody. When the scripture says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever those three syllables will testify against you, man, woman. You don't get away. The scripture said, whosoever. That's everybody. Go on, twist it a little bit. I'll wait. Go on, jump on it a little bit. Huh? Go on, flip your pages a few times and then bring it right back. Because as soon as you get done, it's going to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. The only way it's going to change is if you change it. Then guess what? God going to get you. You ain't got to worry about Pastor Hannah. You ain't got to worry about me. God going to get you. See, all I'm going to do is run up the front of you, down the back of you, and tickle you on your side with that word. And when you get done giggling and laughing, when you get done brushing my, my footprints off of you, when you get these ten and a halves off your back, it's still going to say the same thing. Whosoever means everybody. That means everybody. Go ahead. Whosoever. Whosoever. Uh huh. Put away his wife. Except to be for fornication and shall marry another, commit adultery. It says. Whosoever put away his wife, except, here is your one way out. Except it be for fornication. And you married another. You commit adultery. Now take me back to Deuteronomy. Keep in mind, folks, we're working with this fornication right now. Jesus said the only way you can divorce is if that person commit fornication. Yeah, this, we talk about sexual sin. I ain't got off my topic. This part two of the lesson. I'm still here. I hope you are. If a man found to be laying with him, no, that ain't where I'll go back. You, you don't want too many scriptures. Go to the, the scripture before that one. Uh -huh. I, I want to go to the scripture where it says, if it be true. Verse 20. Go ahead. But if this thing be true. Now, keep in mind, we just talked about Jesus said that you can uh, divorce for fornication. Keep that in mind, rocket scientists. But if this thing be true, if the allegation that the man made is said that the woman wasn't a virgin because the blood's not there. Go ahead. And the tokens of the virginity. And the tokens of her virginity. For the damsel. For the damsel. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house. Uh-huh. Did you turn this? Go ahead. There and we go. the men of her city shall stone her with Okay, stones. let's stop right there. You see, the man didn't know that she wasn't a virgin. She had told him all this time that she was a virgin. But she went out and had an affair that he didn't know about. He didn't know until they consummated the marriage on December 1st. Laid down the, the, the token there. And when they had sex on the token, and when they were done, he found out there was no blood there. So that told him that she wasn't a virgin. She wasn't a maid. She wasn't a virgin. Why? Because there was no blood 
So there she had committed fornication. She didn't commit adultery. How, Pastor Harmon? She, he was married to her. Well, let me explain it to you. Put your Greek Bible down for just a second. Put down your Webster dictionary for, for just a second. You see, before they got married, she went out and committed an act. DJ, you don't have to go there. I'm having Rochelle. I want you to read me. 1 Corinthians 7 and 2. You ain't got to read right now, but I'm, I'll give you a second. See, she had went and committed this act of sleeping with another man, and the, the, the husband didn't, didn't know about it. He didn't find out until they consummated the marriage, and there was no blood. That means she done been with somebody. The hymen had been ruptured already. So Jesus says, this is the only cause that you can get a divorce. When you come in to that woman and the token of, of her virginity ain't there, that's fornication. She committed that act before we got married. I want 1 Corinthians chapter 7, yeah, verse 2. See, she had committed that act before they got married. I'm just about done. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Go ahead. verse 2. It says, nevertheless, nevertheless, to avoid fornication. To avoid it. Listen, fellas, I asked I ask the person, is, is, is there a difference between fornication and adultery? He told me that they're the same, that Adultery is just a more refined version of fornication. If you look in the Webster Dictionary, page 1376, it says that fornication is this, 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 and this. Let me just tell you, sir, let me just tell you, young lady, I don't care what dictionary you go to. It doesn't be the Bible. Dictionary, and when I say the, the when I say the Bible dictionary, I'm talking about the Bible itself. What would that verse say? Go ahead. Nevertheless. Nevertheless, listen. Nevertheless. To avoid fornication. Wait a minute. It said nevertheless to avoid. That means to stay away from. That means to to, to get out of its presence. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. What do I need to do? Let every man. Wait a minute. Listen, fellas. In order to avoid fornication, let every man. Have his own wife. Have his own wife. Nobody else's wife. Listen. You got to have your own wife. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And let every woman. It didn't forget about you either, sister. Don't, don't, don't feel like you were left out. Uh-huh. Because Paul finna get you too. Come on. And that every woman have her own husband. Her own husband. Now, wait a minute. If the scripture just told me in order to avoid fornication, to get married. Well, then marry fornication and adultery can't be the same. How can if the Bible says to avoid fornication, get married and I'm married, how am I able to commit fornication? See, married folks don't commit fornication. We commit adultery. Mm -hmm. It's adultery, fellas. When you're not married, you commit fornication. Go back to my scripture there. Do the round. We almost done. We only got about a few more verses. Hang in there. Here it is on screen, baby. Got your glasses on? Read it. Then they shall bring out the damsel. Then they shall bring out the damsel. This is after they don't foul. There are no, there's no blood on the tokens. Now this, this is where the fellow was telling the truth. That after we done went and laid down, there was no blood. There was no blood. And because there was no blood, that's proof that she was not a virgin. I got reason right now to divorce her. And look, look what happened. Go ahead. To the the door of her father's house. They would house. bring that girl out to the door of her father's house. And the men of the, her city. And the men of her city. Shall stone her with stones that she die. Hold on a minute here. 
You see how serious a thing marriage is? Well, well, that was back in, in a day. No, we may not stone, huh? But God still is holding that standard. Then they try to trap Jesus with this. They come here and say, didn't Moses say we should stone him? You don't have to go there, DJ. It's about the eighth chapter of St. John. The woman caught in adultery. And they said, didn't, ain't we supposed to stone her? Just to see what Jesus is going to say. They were going to see if he say something different than Moses said. And Jesus there just riding in the dirt. Then he looked up to him and says, yeah, that, that's, that's what's supposed to happen. But I tell you what, fellas, we're going to follow that law. But let me, let, me, let me just tell you this. You without the first stone, you without sin, cast the first stone. Let's go, let's, let's get down to business. You that ain't got no sin, go ahead. And, and I'll be here. Let me know when you're ready. And he went back to writing in the dirt. And when he looked up, he saw nobody else there but that woman that was caught. And he asked her a question. He said, where are thy accusers? Where are them folks at that brought you here and was ready to take your life? Where are they? They all gone. The scripture says from the eldest, I mean the older person, to the younger one, they, they all gone. And Jesus says, well, neither do I accuse you. He said, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Go ahead, finish. I'm going I'm to hurry this up. Because she had wrought folly in Israel. Yeah, because she went out and messed around. To play the whore. She done played the whore. House. She was supposed to be saving herself for this man, but she went out and had some fun. So shall thou put evil away from among you. We, uh, all this evil is getting out of Israel. Go ahead. If a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband. Now hold on here now for you fellas. This is talking about a single man messing around with this married woman. Let's go. To a husband, then they shall both of them die. Amen. Both of them. This is saying that when a married woman and a single man are out there fooling around, the scripture says that both of them get stoned. Go ahead. We're going to get through this real quickly. Both the man that lie with the woman uh -huh. and the woman, uh -huh. so shalt thou put away evil from uh -huh. Israel. We get this evil out of Israel. We, we're, not, we're not putting up with this. Go ahead. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto a husband. Now, hold on. It says if a young lady be engaged, because I know some of these, these, these words uh, uh, you may not know, and that's all right. You, that's all right. But, but we're just going to break it down. And if you know them, forgive me. Let me get through this because it's somebody that don't know. It says if a damsel that is a virgin, she ain't never had sex. Here's a young lady who ain't never had sex. But she's engaged. She's betrothed. She's engaged. She has a fiance. She's engaged unto her husband. Go ahead. Betrothed unto her husband, and a man find her in the city. Uh huh. And he lie with her. Hold on a second. You're fine right there, DJ. That's good. It says this young lady that's betrothed to a husband. That right there just shows you when you look it up, fella in your Webster Dictionary, and you see, you see it's, it's a promise to be married, the scripture said to a husband. See, they were considered married if it was just without the benefits. What you folks don't did now, you done made it friends with benefits. See, the scripture had it friends without them benefits until we get married. But what you do now, it's friends with benefits. You done changed God's word. 
You got a friend with benefit. What does that mean? You can come by and do the nasty and then go on home like nothing happened. But let me tell you something, sir. Let me tell you something, ma'am. The scriptures has declared that everything you do, everything I do, every idle word that you speak, every idle word that I speak, we must give an account. You will stand before God, and so will I. You Christians that think, well, well, God say he cast your sin away. And let me explain something to you, sir. Let me educate you, ma'am. Let me educate you. Old oh, ladies, put your spit cup down for a second. When you come to God, And you ask God to save you. When you come with a repentant heart. We don't preach repentance no more, do we? Do we, pastor? When was the last time it even came out of your mouth, pastor? When you come to God with a repentant heart. Everything you did up until that point. God tells the angels to, to take the eraser and wipe it clean. That's my son. That's my daughter. I'm going to clean the slate for him. He starts you off brand new. The scripture says that we also are like that old swine. You can bring him in the house and you can scrub him. You can get all under there. You can get the water hose and pressure spray them. You can even put that big old red bow around his neck. Huh? If you got an extra bow, wrap it around his fat belly. Because when you're all done, when you let him loose, he's going back out there in the muck and the murk. Such as some of you have done. When God cleans you up, he didn't clean you up for you to go out there and get dirty. But what do you say? Uh, well, well, God say, you know, he's mercy and grace. Mercy and grace. Huh? But you fail to understand. God didn't just clean you to send you back out there. Paul said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Huh? He said, God forbid. So your license to sin has been canceled with that verse. Preach that now, pastor. You are responsible. You are responsible. Keep putting, keep sprinkling in that old spiritual devil sugar so the people can take it. Keep putting that on there. You will give an account. And just because you heard it wrong from the pastor, young man, young woman, old man, old woman, does not exempt you. The scripture says, let every man work out his own salvation. It says that he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Keep justifying your sin, brother. God is still saying, I love you. My hand is stretched out. Come to me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. And he said, I'll give you rest. But what do you do? You push his hand away. Huh? And then the little old gray-haired preacher here that ain't got but one or two people here that's standing here giving you all he got trying to tell you. I'm God's traffic cop. I'm trying to tell you, you can't go even every inch and every way you want. You can't do it. Huh? But you find a way to do it. Huh? Well, what my pastor said, what did God say? Well, I even talked to four pastors. What did God say? Who are you going to listen to? Your pastor, because he ain't going to judge you. 
if they don't get right, they're going to be in a, 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 a special place for pastors that tell not the truth. Go ahead. And a man find her in a city and lie with her. Mm -hmm. Then ye shall bring them both out uh -huh. unto the gate of that city. Uh -huh. And ye shall stone them with stones. Okay, hold it right there. Let me just recap here. Here is a lady who is engaged. That means she's going to marry this fella. But then she goes in the city like you all. You, you go to the mall and you do your shopping with your, 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 your fingernails, the, the, the devil nails, the sharp ones. You think you're looking all pretty and you, you got your high heels on. You can barely walk. Yes, you. I'm talking about you. Uh-huh. You go into the city or you go into the mall batting them big old fat fake eyelashes. That ain't God. You go in there and you just, you know you're just looking good. Huh? And this old fella starts to talk to you. Mm-hmm. And then you go off somewhere and you, and you do the nasty. And you think don't nobody know. But when you found out, see back then they stoned the both of you. That's what it was saying. Both of you were stoned. Look at the punishment for this adultery. Look at the punishment for this fornication. Two acts was committed here. Disobedience, fornications. Well, it's the same thing, Pastor. But we'll get to one where one committed adultery and one committed fornication. Go ahead, read. I'm almost done. Hey, uh, fella. I'm almost done. Give me a few, give me a few more minutes. Uh, uh, this is soul business. Uh, this is something I just can't rush through because, see, there's a lot of people tied up in this. This is something I got to take my time with. This is something I have to take time to do the best I can to make sure you know what the scripture is saying. So forgive me. If you got to go, I understand some of you might got to go to work. Go back, uh, look at the time mark so you can go back and catch the rest of it and get yourself to work. Go ahead. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city. In, in, the in, in, in other words, this lady didn't say, if this guy tried to force, forcibly take her, when it says she cried not, she didn't say, rape, rape, rape. That's what it says, she cried not. Go ahead. Being in the city and the man, uh -huh. because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife. In other words, he took his neighbor's wife. He took, he took her by force. A, some, the, the, the man a, a break in the house, and they're going there and rape that woman. And the woman didn't say nothing. That's what it's called. This woman didn't say nothing. So thou Hold shalt. on a second. There, there was something that happened in the city of, of Milwaukee a, a few years back where this fella broke in a woman's house and raped her. She didn't report it. She didn't scream or nothing. The fella left. And he said, well, she didn't say nothing. She started leaving the, the door open for him to come back. That's what that's talking about. You think it didn't happen? He was coming in there every Tuesday, whatever it was. She knew what time he came the last time. She wanted that fella to come through. You think it's, listen, brother, listen, sister, if you think that, look it up. It's happening, and it's happening now. Go ahead. Humble his neighbor's wife. Mm -hmm. So thou shalt put away evil from among you. God wouldn't tolerate this. Go ahead. But if a man find a betroth damsel. Okay, listen field, here. He says, but if a man find a betroth damsel in the field, okay, this is saying if. Some fella, he sees this lady working somewhere. Uh-huh. And the man forced her. Okay, now the man forced her or the man rapes her. The man forces her to do something that she doesn't want to do. Uh-huh. And lie with her. Uh-huh. Then the man only uh -huh. that lie with her shall die. Uh-huh. So wait a minute. It said here, this man forcibly raped this woman. And the woman cried out, help, help, he's raping me, help. Woman, God does not hold any judgment against you. 
And I understand. I, can, I can't really understand, but I know when somebody violates your body. I, I, I haven't been there, but I, I can kind of sympathize with you. I know. God wants you to know. There is no charge against you. You are free. There's no charge against you. That's God's word. Didn't come from Pastor Harmon. God is saying, lady, if somebody violated you and you screamed, you tried to free yourself and you couldn't, God said there's no charge against you. That's why I love to stream them verses up there so you crooked pastors, now you got to answer your folks. Because your folks going to come to you and say, there was some little gray head fella, I can't think of his name, uh, Harmon or something like that. Well, anyway, pastor, he, he showed me this verse. Can you explain it to me? You know what the pastor's going to tell you? Let me tell you before it even happens. I ain't prophesying. I'm just going to tell you what they're going to do. Well, brother, sister, let me get back to you. Let me get back to you on that. Because uh, I, 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 I got a meeting on the phone or something. You lying devil, you. And what they're going to do, they're going to type up something and send you an email. It just tell you to read this because now you, you, you don't have an opportunity to question your pastor because all you got is this email. Shame on you. Shame on you. The number here is 414-375-7179. Call the old gray head fella and let me take out time with you that your pastor won't. Hmm? I ain't said you got to be a member here. That don't bother me at all. all. If you're saved, that's all I want. I don't care if another, well, I do care because uh, I want folks to be saved. But if don't nobody else walk through that door, if you got what's right, I'm happy. Read. But unto the damsel, thou mm -hmm. shalt do nothing. What did it say? You should what? Do nothing. It said do nothing to her. She hadn't done anything. Go ahead. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. Okay, hold it right there. It said, there, the, don't do nothing to the, to the damsel. There is no sin in her that's worthy of death. She hadn't done anything. Uh-huh. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor uh -huh. and slay him, mm -hmm. even so is this matter. He compared the two. He said that it ain't no different than murder. When a man go and do that. It, it's the same as the sin of murder. You rapist, you. But let me tell you how good this God is. You men that have done these things and you're sitting there looking at me and I know you feel bad now. Let me tell you something, man or woman, because you can do the same thing. But let me tell you something. That was such a horrible act you did. To violate that woman, that child. Let me tell you. I was a full-time administrator for my child care center for quite a while. Now those young fellas done kind of took over so the old man can do the things of God. Thank God for them. But let me tell you something. There's one thing that, and I worked in a jail, there was one thing that was so hard for me to deal with. When a person, man or woman, does something to an innocent child, God don't get you. I look at those little faces that come in every day. Those little innocent faces, those little innocent children that aren't able to protect themselves. God's going to get you. God's going to get you. Every time you hurt one of those children, it's written down, brother. It's written down, sister. You, protect, you, 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 you violate our innocent children. And guess what? After you've done all that, after you 
cursed them. After you violated their little bodies, they still love you. Because all they know is you. They look for you as their protection, but you violate them. God don't get you. But let me tell you how great and merciful this God is. After you've done all those horrible things to those small children that can't protect themselves, those children that can't speak for themselves and tell somebody what you did to them, God is still willing to forgive you. God is still willing to wipe it away and give you a clean slate. And I pray that God can work on the mind of those children. That they don't remember such horrible acts that you've done to them. Those that can't protect themselves. When I do make it to the office, I love them little ones. They always run to me and, and grab me because you, I'm going to hug each one of them. Doesn't matter. I'm not in that much a hurry. I shake hands with every little hand that comes to me. Even those that don't come to me. I go and find them and hug them and tell you, Mr. Donnie, love you. Because mama and daddy ain't telling them that. Go ahead. For you found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried. Mm hmm and there was none to save her. There was nobody to rescue this lady who was being raped by this man. No if, one to help her. Go ahead, we just about done. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her. Now hold on. It says if a man finds a, a, a young lady who's not betrothed, meaning not engaged. Uh-huh. And lie with her. Uh -huh. Lay hold of her. And when it says lay hold on her, he done uh, uh, took her, uh, laid with her. Uh huh. And they be found. And they be found. Hold on now. So let's get the picture here. Here's a, a, a single man who sees this single lady. She's a virgin. She's not engaged to anyone. And he lies with her. Uh huh. He didn't forcibly, this doesn't say he forced, they had consensual. Uh-huh, what happened? Then the man that lay and, with her. And they'd be found. Now, somebody done found, they did this thing. Go ahead. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shackles of silver. Uh-huh. And she shall be his wife. Uh-huh. She should be his what? Wife. Uh-huh. Because he have humbled her, he may not put her away all his days. All right. We're going to stop right there as far as this book. DJ, if you can give me Romans 7. Two and three, and I'm going to be done, folks. After we get done with this verse, I'm going to be done. Listen, I get a little emotional when I talk about children. Jesus said, suffer not the children to come. He had a special love for children. You folks are violating them. You're violating these little kids. But look how God, gracious God is. He's still willing to forgive you. But some of you just won't accept it. And you're still doing it, brother, sister. God got a place for you if you don't give up and stop and come to him. Now listen. You just looked at what God gave you in Deuteronomy with regard to fornication and adultery with regard to the espoused wife and the wife. Now, I, I, I know most of you that, that, that are viewing me, uh, some of you don't understand the English language. Uh, I know there's folks in Africa that done contacted me, and English may not be that good, but, but you, you hear that understand English, good English, and, and broken English. Listen to what the word of God says, and you keep on and interpret it some other way. 
The word of God here is very clear. Go ahead. For the woman which have a husband. For the woman. Let me, let me just say this here. Man, you can put yourself in there. You can say for the man who has a wife. Huh? Because this ain't just talking about women. It go for you too, brother. For the woman which has a husband. Is bound by the law. Is bound by the law. To her husband. To her husband. So long as he lives. So long as he lives. You are bound to your husband as long as your husband is alive. Go ahead. But if the husband be dead. But if he done died. But if he's no longer existing, walking around here as a human being. But if he's in the ground and buried. I don't know no other way to put it. If he's dead. Go ahead. She is loosed from the law of her husband. You are free, lady. The Bible says that if your husband be dead, you are loose from the law of your husband. Uh huh. So then, if while her husband liveth. So then it says, let me let, let, let me back up here, lady. It says, but while your husband liveth. Uh huh. She may, she be married to another man. Hold, hold on, a second. let's back that up. I'm sorry. You know, sometimes uh, when we're old school, we, we had a record that had a scratch on it. You may have missed something. So we're going to rewind it for you. Go ahead, honey. So then, uh -huh. if while her husband liveth. So then, if while her husband is alive. If her husband is breathing, if her husband is in the hospital and he on life of support, but he still know he's still here. Huh? As long as he lives, he lives in, 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 in Germany now and I'm in uh, Illinois. He's still alive. He's still here. Well, uh, well, he left us and he said he didn't want me. And. He's still alive. The Bible says as long as he liveth. Here you go on to put, well, he left me. Uh, well, he this. Well, he won't take care. The Bible says as long as he liveth. Go ahead. She. Go ahead. Now back up. To another. Now, there we go. Back that up and let's read it again. So then, if while her husband liveth. So while, as long as the husband is alive. She be married to another. And you got another husband. Listen. Listen. She shall be called an adulteress. Wait, now back that up one more time because uh, I'm, I'm sure my friend that's smoking that old Newport might have missed it. Go ahead. She be married to another man. Uh, I want you to back it all the way up. So then, mm -hmm. if while her husband lives, uh -huh, uh -huh. she be married to another man. Uh huh. She shall be called an adulteress. With the scripture just said, well, as long as your husband is alive, your first husband, your only husband, and you be married to another man, the Bible says you shall be called an adulteress. Some people don't really understand or can get it verbally. So just allow the old gray head preacher here just to give you an example. Uh-huh. You see, uh, this here represents the first husband that's still alive. Uh-huh. And the, wait, honey. And the woman, just, just imagine me. Let me step in her place for a minute. Here's the first husband. Here's the woman. And here is the other fella that she's going to marry. The Bible says as long as he's alive, and she going to get married to him. The Bible says, not Pastor Harmon, the Bible says she's an adulteress. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. Because he is still alive. Now, if he were dead, out of the picture, you don't see him no more. She's free to go ahead and marry this fella now. Go ahead. An adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law. The Bible says is he, if he's dead, you're free. So that she is no adulteress. That she is not an adulteress. 
though she be married even to though she be married to another man. That's scripture. You can close your Bible here, honey. Let me thank you all for tuning in to part two. And let me plead with you. To obey the scripture. Not what Pastor Donnie said. Not what Brother Donnie said. Obey the scripture. Because whatever came out of my mouth, I got it right there. And you followed me. Now, don't let your pastor tell you, well, uh, that ain't really what that means because you see me and my wife. She my second wife. And God forgave us, you see. We asked for forgiveness, he gave us. The scripture says, shall you continue in sin? It told you it was adultery if you did it. But now you want to say, well, I asked for God forgiveness and I'm still in good standings because, you know, I can stay with her because I asked for forgiveness. Listen. God has already pronounced judgment. You can't ask God to forgive you for something that he already pronounced judgment on. You understand? You, you, God ain't going to forgive you for something he already pronounced judgment on. If, if the Bible said that all fornicators, all liars, all idolaters, all adulterers shall have their part in the lake, you can't continue in it, fella. But see, when you stop doing those things, you're no longer a liar. You're no longer an adult. You're no longer a fornicator. You're no longer a homosexual. Paul said, such of these things were, were, past tense, were some of you. But you have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen, brother, sister, I don't care how much tide you scrub yourself with. I don't care how much banaka blast you drink. Sin is not cleaned up only by the blood of Jesus Christ. You can get any kind of scrub brush you want. You can walk yourself 24-7 to scrub a dub. Still can't clean you. Only God can forgive sin. Only God can clean sin. The scripture has declared that God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. Should not perish but should have everlasting life. Do you want everlasting life? Or do you want to continue to take a chance and think he just might make it in? I want to serve God with all I got. I want you to serve him with all you got. You got to be clean before him. You have to be clean before him. I know it's a hard thing to come out of that. You've been with this woman, you've been with this man 20 years now, and you got five kids. Ezra said, we have transgressed against God because we have taken wives that we weren't supposed to. He said, how do we clean this up? We got to get rid of them. That's what he said. Read it. Ezra chapter 10. But some of you, the word of God has nailed you right in your heart. And now he's giving you a chance to come to him. He says, come now and let us reason together. God said, come on, let's talk about it. Come on and let's commune together. Let me show you my precepts. Let me allow you to walk in my footsteps. Will you do it today, brother, sister? Will you accept this God that I serve? He's wonderful. I don't have everything I want. No, I don't. But this God give me everything I need. Because everything I want ain't good for me. 
But see, I'm just a man and I don't know that. God knows. Will you today, brother or sister, will you receive him? Right where you are. Brother, sister, if, if you made fun of this old dude, it's all right. I forgive you. If you had wisecracks about our God, he forgives you. Let me tell you something. I can't be a saved man if I hold anything against you. So if you have something against anybody, you have to let it go. Make every attempt to call that person and ask them to forgive you. So if you will receive him today, doesn't matter how far you are, where you are, or when you hear this message, if you want to receive him today, Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we come before you and we are guilty before you, Lord. I repent of my sin. I have become godly sorry. Lord, I know if I continue in the way that I'm going, that I will spend eternity apart from you. God, I want to be with you. God, I want you to speak to my heart every day. I want you to speak to my mind, God. I want you to heal me, God. Lord, will you take me as your child? I repent of my sin, God. I believe that your son Jesus died on the cross for my sin. I confess my sin, and I confess that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. God, you told me if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that I shall be saved. Brother or sister, if you prayed with me, if you were sincere in your prayer, welcome to the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are now my brother. You are now my sister in him. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. Praise be unto our God. Father in heaven, we thank you for the message, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for those that have come to salvation, who've heard your word today. We thank you for those, God, who throughout this world, who have heard a message from someone else and have come to you. God, we thank you for them. We thank you, God, for all men who stand for your word, God, who preach your word. And God, we ask you to give them strength Give them power, Lord. Give them a mind to continue, Lord. Help us to stand, God. The road gets a little difficult, God. But you know how to encourage us, God. You give us strength, Lord. Help my brothers to help me and help others. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you, O oh God. Let every heart say thank God and amen. Praise God. We thank you all for, for tuning in. And we're going to ask you all to, if you can, share the message when you view it. Or I, there's a button on there you hit to share it. Do that for me. I understand some of you can't come out and some of you have your own services. That's fine. As long as you're getting the word of God. There are some of my friends that are not quite able to make it out to their own church. And, and this is church for them. Amen. Uh, my, my, my brother uh, Barry Hickles just had two knee surgeries, double knee surgery. Amen. And he can maybe get up and move around the house, but he's not mobile where he can get out and, and go worship with, 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 his, with, his, uh, with his church. And I don't know if they stream, but God made a way for him to get it. And it's here. It's, and those that are able to get out, you've gotten it. And I hope something has been said or done to bring you unto Christ. Amen. We're going to sign off. Thank you for tuning in. And again, those of you that are able to share this message and uh, take it overseas, wherever it needs to go, do it for me, please. We thank you for tuning in and we ask that you have a blessed and prosperous day. Thank you. All right. All right.